Last Monday Masterclass, we examined ways to speed up our website server-side. And this week, we're going to speed up our site by reducing plugins and optimizing content without losing quality or quantity. If we're going to figure out where and how to trim and streamline our data, we should first understand how our site data is processed and deployed to the user. Which is why we're including an in-depth explanation in the written article that we published with this video. And you can find links to this and more in the show notes below. Now, meanwhile, as promised, for this hands-on masterclass, we'll audit a site and show just how all of our theory works in practice. And the best way to learn how to get it right is to work with an example of a website done wrong. At first glance, this site might seem familiar. It does resemble our recently released photography portfolio template kit. However, we've deliberately tinkered with it so that it's far slower and nothing like our final product. So let's begin with step one and perform an initial speed test using GT Matrix or Google's PageSpeed Insights. Now, this will show us how our site is performing and also give us an idea of where we can start to clean up our site and shave time off of our page load time. Now, what we'll be doing next is reviewing why this site is so slow and what we can do about it, beginning with speeding up our site platform side. As we mentioned last masterclass, the server begins responding to a request by creating an HTML file. This acts as a blueprint or construction manual for the browser or client to know how to render or reconstruct the data we send into a viewable site. Now, to do this, the server has to read through all of WordPress's definitions and guidelines. And the good news is that WordPress are constantly improving things on their side to help speed up their part of the process. The bad news is what comes next, when the server has to read through the list of definitions in the theme, and then the plugins, and then the add-ons to retrieve similar data for this HTML file. And yes, we're only talking in milliseconds, but this is where every millisecond counts. So we'll move on to step two, optimizing our theme. Now, you're probably aware of the growing no theme or theme-less movement among professional WordPress web creators. Themes have a tendency not only to limit design possibilities and flexibility, but also add unwanted time to the service process. And this is why the Hello theme became so popular so fast. It's one of the lightest, most flexible themes out there, if not the most. And the reason for that is that it's so light, it's practically invisible. Next is step number three, where we'll further optimize our platform by reducing the number of plugins that we have activated. Now remember, the server reads through each and every one, whether they are redundant or not. Now in our example site, we've got separate plugins for a contact form and a pop-up menu. Plugins and add-ons that are already available on Elementor and available because developers have gone through all the trouble of creating these customizable widgets precisely to allow web creators to make their sites fast and as efficient as possible. Now, having fine-tuned our site, platform side, we want to make things easier for the browser or client. And the way that we do that is by reducing not the quantity, but the weight of our content payload. Now, looking at the breakdown of our speed test at what is commonly known as a waterfall, we can see that the heaviest files are our images. Up front, you should know that WordPress automatically reduces the density of any JPEG assets that we upload to the media folder, which is great, but still not enough. Now, many designers prefer to use graphic file types like PNGs for vector art and images with transparency, which WordPress does not convert. But as we've mentioned in previous masterclasses, there are a couple of great apps and online sites like TinyPNG that can help us scale down images to a far more acceptable weight. And we'll put links to these in the show notes below. Now, two more things to consider while processing our graphic assets are the dimensions and the resolution. Now, when it comes to size, a bigger picture will not give you 
better quality. If you have an asset that is meant to fit in a uh, 400 by 400 pixel space, a 2400 by 2400 pixel image is a waste of weight. Instead, we'll perform step number four and make sure that the images that we upload to WordPress have the dimensions of the largest instance that we will need. And most likely that's going to be for the desktop view of our site. Now, WordPress automatically creates several instances of our images so that users don't have to wait for huge files to be scaled to fit their screen size. And it's because of this that Elementor relies on the WordPress media feature for uploading and relaying images. The next thing that affects the weight of an image is its resolution, which is measured in the density of pixels per inch, or PPI, not to be confused with DPI, which is a similar concept, but from the world of printed graphics. It used to be the case that 72 PPI was sufficient enough for all of our graphic assets, but these days we need to consider display formats such as 4K and Retina. Now, so far, we have less to fear or worry about from 4K. However, Retina, an Apple display system, is prevalent on iPhones, iPads, iMacs, and MacBooks. And that's a lot of users that we need to consider when designing our sites. The pixel density of Retina technology differs from one device to another and continues to grow with time. Currently, many experts are adamant that all of our assets should be at least 300 ppi. While GIFs are very popular assets to use in our design, a great tip is to use short videos instead, as they aren't as heavy as GIFs, especially when we're using a linked video widget. Moving on to step number five, use caching or lazy loading plugins. And we've spoken about these in previous masterclasses. Unlike the other plugins that we have mentioned, these plugins are extremely useful for speeding up page load time. The way that they work in layman's terms is by using placeholders on the pages instead of the heavier images. And as the user scrolls down the page, the missing assets are transferred as needed from the server without the user having to waste any extra time waiting. As such, Google assumes that the site loads much faster and clocks it at a much better page load time. Now, like many of you, we recommend WP Rocket to get this job done, and you can find a link to that in the show notes below. On to step number six, remove redundant structure elements. There is a chance that, as Elementor users, you might be overloading your page with redundant and unnecessary elements. Now, you'll want to use as few columns and sections and empty widgets as you can. Personally, I begin by trying to keep an entire page in one section. And you'll want to avoid using external scripts for things like ads, uh, font loaders, etc., that can have a huge impact on your website's performance. And we've spoken about this and more in our masterclass on common mistakes among Elementor users. And there'll be a link to that in the show notes as well. Now, this brings us to another concept that you've been bringing up in the community, and that is step number seven, minification. Minification refers to the process of clearing up all of the redundant content, excessive code, and space, which also takes up room. Apps like Kangax HTML Minifier or Minifier are tools designed to identify and remove redundant and convoluted HTML, JavaScript, and CSS code, significantly reducing the weight of our site data and improving the site's functionality. Finally, step number eight. Once we've cleaned and streamlined our site, we'll run another speed test using GT Metrics, Google, or Test My Site to test our page's desktop and responsive loading time alongside industry benchmarks. And this will give us scores based on real world data from user experience. Now, the speed we're looking for is four seconds or faster based on extensive research by companies like Google who have vested interest in understanding what online users want, getting our page load time down to two seconds would be wonderful. But for really big sites like online stores, less than four seconds is great. Seven seconds or less is not brilliant, but still a pretty good speed. 
Another great way to evaluate our site's performance is by using Speed Scorecard to see how our mobile site speed compares in different locations within the geographic regions that we're targeting in countries around the world. Another idea is to compare your page load time with that of your competitors' sites. Even if you can't get your load time down dramatically, you still want to be faster and more reliable than the competition. Beyond everything we've examined, it's important to remember that there is no perfect solution for speed. It all boils down to testing and retesting and above all, finding the balance between what we need our site to deliver and how fast we get it there. Now, as web creators, sometimes our mission is to blow our audience's minds, but sometimes we're risking speed. But this is exactly where creativity and ingenuity thrive within the limitation. Now, a great deal of what we've discussed should be implemented, or at least discussed, at the design stage. As regular viewers, you probably recall us stressing the importance of planning stage time and again, and planning for speed is essential to a website's design. Some of you might have noticed that in this masterclass there were some issues that we haven't discussed, such as throttling and other topics that we felt would be better addressed in a later separate expert level masterclass that we have planned for the future. And speaking of which, if you've enjoyed this masterclass and you found it helpful, insightful or inspiring, make sure that you click on the subscribe button and tap that bell so that you don't miss out on our next masterclass. Also, since releasing part one of this masterclass on speed, we've been enjoying your comments and really great insight. So please, if you have any further advice or tips that could help other users speed up their websites, please share it in the comments below. And if you have any criticisms, we are equally interested in your thoughts. Because after all, our goal is to be the best at helping others excel at their craft. Thanks for watching. Cheers.